Hello everyone, my name is Boomer Olson. I'm a third year medical student at Midwestern University in Arizona, and I'm currently working as a research fellow at the Broad Institute in Massachusetts. Today, I'll be telling you a little bit about my research, which involves glucose, insulin, and diabetes. I'll start by sharing more about myself and how I got to where I am today. Here's a picture of me when I was about nine, which is probably near your current age. Growing up, I loved sports, including baseball, soccer, ice hockey, golf, and everything else, really. At your age, I wanted to be a professional athlete. I continued playing football during my college years at Cornell University. Here's me, number 46. I was a kicker. That means that I handled uh, kickoffs, extra points, and field goals. When I was 18 years old, uh, about one year after I started college, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. At that time, I didn't know much about diabetes. However, after my diagnosis, I became extremely interested and wanted to learn more about diabetes and medicine and science in general. I continued playing football for a year after my diagnosis, but ultimately decided to leave the football team so I could spend more time learning about medicine and science. Here's a picture of me with my insulin pump, which is a treatment for diabetes and we'll talk more about that later. After leaving the football team, I studied animal, animal behavior for my first research pro project. More specifically, I studied dogs' behaviors at animal shelters in upstate New York. Here's a pug that I was studying for my project, and if you look closely, you can see another pug on my goofy shirt. Uh, so I, I included this because I wanted to emphasize that there are a whole bunch of interesting topics beyond the biomedical sciences. So there's undoubtedly a topic that will catch your interest as you explore science more. During college, I decided I wanted to go to medical school to pursue a career in medicine and science. I started medical school at Midwestern University in 2017. Here's a picture of me with my parents shortly after our white coat ceremony. The white coat ceremony is when medical students receive this white jacket here that doctors often wear when seeing patients. A couple years after starting medical school, I decided to take some time to focus on just research. I moved from Arizona to Massachusetts in 2019 to begin studying diabetes at the Broad Institute. Here's a picture of me at, in the laboratory at the Broad Institute and you can see here the shelves and refrigerator that we keep our science reagents. And then at the end of this line is an X. And uh, what, what does that X mark? Well, that X represents the end goal of my journey, which is a long and successful career as a physician scientist. We'll talk more about what a physician scientist does later on, but I wanted to point out that many people choose to work as a physician or as a scientist, but uh, there's this space right here in the middle of this di Venn diagram where they overlap, and the science and medicine mesh really well and lead to a super interesting career. I've also included a couple of emojis here to catch your attention. This one here is an old school thermometer that you've probably never seen before, but physicians used to use these to take uh, patients' body temperatures when they weren't feeling well or perhaps they, they, they thought they had a fever. And then over here is a test tube filled with bubbly green goop, which a lot of people uh, seem to like to associate with science. The rest of my, of my slides will look like this. On the left, there's this list of vocabulary. Um, you don't need to read, this, read through this vocabulary now, but you can come back to these definitions later on to, rev to review what we've talked about. On the right, there's this open space here that I'll fill with drawings that will help explain our vocabulary words, which are glucose, insulin, diabetes, diabetes therapies, and physician scientists. We'll start by talking about glucose. So what is glucose? If you look here, there's a young student who is about to eat this strawberry. And uh, what happens to the strawberry after our friend chews and swallows? The strawberry will slide down this tube called the esophagus and into this structure inside our belly called the stomach. The stomach is like a pouch, like a backpack or purse that can hold and digest food. 
let's zoom in on the stomach right here that is circled and we'll take a closer look at what happens to the strawberry. Here's a strawberry and um, it's in the stomach which is full of these digestive juices that turn food like the strawberry into glucose. Glucose is shown here. It's this teeny tiny energy molecule with this hexagonal shape. Millions and millions of these glucose molecules are linked together to make food, like the strawberry. But once the strawberry has been disassembled into these individual glucose molecules, the glucose will be transported through the wall of the stomach, kind of like a paper towel soaking up water, and into your bloodstream here. The bloodstream will transport the glucose to other parts of your body, kind of like little boats floating down a river. But what happens when the glucose reaches the other parts of your body? Well, I call glucose an energy molecule because it gives us energy. Our muscles need glucose so we can do things like dance, play soccer, and swim. However, the glucose needs to move from our bloodstream and into our muscles in order to give us energy. But the glucose can't do that by itself. It needs help. That's what insulin does. It helps glucose move from the bloodstream and into our muscles. We're going to look closer at insulin now. So here's a strawberry eating friend, and here's the stomach. But now you can see this little yellow structure peeking out from behind the stomach. What is that? Well, when we remove the stomach and look, uh, we can see the full extent of that yellow structure, which is called the pancreas. It's the pancreas's job to make insulin. So we've zoomed in on the pancreas here, and the pancreas is looking super happy and healthy. Uh, the pancreas is holding a letter and a pencil, and that letter represents insulin, a messenger molecule, because insulin is like a message that tells your muscles to take up glucose. The pancreas makes insulin and puts it into the bloodstream, where the insulin joins up with glucose that's already flowing in the bloodstream. Then both the insulin and glucose are transported by the bloodstream to your muscles. Then once the glucose and insulin get um, to your muscles, like the muscles in your arm, uh, they'll want to go inside. But glucose can't do it alone again. It needs insulin. And uh, that's because that insulin contains a message that says, Hey muscle, let these glucose molecules in. So once the glucose molecules are inside your muscles, they give you energy to dance like these guys here and do other activities. Now we're gonna talk about diabetes. Here we've zoomed in on the pancreas again and the pancreas is looking happy and healthy and is making insulin like it should. However, diabetes is when the pancreas stops working. In a diabetic pancreas, the pancreas becomes sick. It shrivels up like this little blue pancreas here and stops making insulin. Because there's no insulin in the bloodstream, the glucose molecules can't get into the muscles and instead build up until there are way too many. And then again, because the glucose isn't getting into our muscles, uh, the diabetic pancreas doesn't have any, any energy, so they feel really tired and sick. But here's an important question. How can we fix diabetes and help our diabetic pa pa patients feel happy and healthy again? We fix diabetes with diabetes therapies. So here's another picture of me and then my insulin pump. And my insulin pump has this long tube right here that inserts just underneath my skin and is attached to my arm by this sticker. And as you can see, apples are one of my favorite fruits. Uh, but remember, that apple will be turned into glucose in my stomach, and that glucose needs insulin um, in order to get into my muscles to give me energy. However, I have diabetes. That means my pancreas is sick and doesn't make insulin like it should. So whenever I want to eat an apple like I'm doing here, I tell my insulin pump that I'm eating an apple. Then my insulin pump will send insulin through this tube and into my body. And then that insulin will help the glucose from the apple get into my muscles, just like we talked about. At the Broad Institute, I research diabetes therapies, like my insulin pump. My insulin pump is great. 
but I want to figure out an even better way to treat diabetes and help diabetic pancreases feel happier and healthier. So I spent a lot of time thinking about and conducting experiments on this question here in this cloud. Here's the diabetic pancreas. It's shriveled up and no longer makes insulin. And I'm trying to learn how to help that diabetic pancreas grow big and strong so it makes insulin again. For those of you who have a deeper understanding of science, here are a few more details about that. The diabetic pancreas shrivels up because of beta cell death. Beta cells are special cells in the pancreas that make and release insulin. So you can imagine that this little blue pancreas here is actually made up of thousands of teeny tiny dots, and those dots are actually beta cells. So when some of those beta cells die, as in diabetes, the pancreas itself shrinks. It's my goal to find a drug or other therapy that will make those beta cells multiply, which will in turn um, make that pancreas grow into a bigger, stronger pancreas that will start releasing insulin again. If we find new diabetes therapies that fix this diabetic pancreas, people with diabetes will no longer need to rely on an insulin pump for insulin. Here's our last slide for today, which aims to answer the question, what is a physician scientist? A physician, like the one shown here, is another word for a medical doctor. Doctors work in medical clinics or hospitals and help patients, like you, when you're feeling sick or need a checkup. Scientists often work in laboratories. Scientists conduct experiments to learn why patients become sick and how we can help those patients feel better. That's what a therapy is, if you recall from my last slide and the example of the insulin pump. So scientists create therapies and doctors help give those therapies to patients so they feel better. Physician scientists, like these two here, do both. Physician scientists have a unique set of skills that enables them to figure out why people become sick and how we can help them feel better. And also, physician scientists often have a third job. Um, they, uh, a lot of physician scientists also partake in education, so they teach young medical students or young scientists, kind of like I'm teaching you right now. At your age, you may have no idea at all what you want to be when you grow up, and that's totally okay. Or some of you may think you want to become a professional athlete like I did, or an artist, or a teacher, or whatever else. But as you get older, you may decide that you want to be a physician scientist, just like I did. And I can tell you, it is a ton of fun, and you get to learn new things every day and help people, which is makes the uh, job so fun and rewarding. So that's the end of our lesson. If you have any questions about diabetes or anything else, please get in touch with your teacher or the American Physician Scientists Association who sponsored this video series. Both will be able to provide you with my contact information. I would be happy to hear from you and would love to have the opportunity to chat. Thank you for watching this mini lesson with a medical scientist.